Hi everyone, Michael here with Mainline. We just wrapped up the latest episode in our Tech Connect live webinar series with a training session on Sure Designer 4.1 system configuration software. But if you missed it, we got your back. Here's the recording. All right, good morning. Thank you for logging in with us today for Tech Connect. Uh, sure Designer system configuration software training. Uh, we're glad you're here. Thanks for taking some time to be with us. Um, we know that uh, these days are different and, and uh, unique, each and every one. And so uh, we're glad that you took some time to, to jump on here with us uh, and go through some training. I uh, want to let you know that there is a, a Q&A um, chat available to you in the top right portion of your screen. You'll see a little uh, question mark. Uh, you can feel free to ask any questions as we go. Um, we'll try our best to, to answer them um, when it's appropriate. If there's something going on in, in the moment that you know requires uh, me to interrupt Michael uh, as he does the presentation, we will certainly stop and, and address the question at that time. So feel free to, to post your questions there. We'll get to them as soon as we can. Um, with that, I'll introduce you all to Michael Casey. Michael Casey is our uh, technical specialist here at Mainline. Uh, he's been with us now for uh, about nine months, uh, comes with a great background in, in a lot of different things in technology. Um, and he has spent a good amount of time with uh, Sure in Chicago to be prepared to present to you the uh, Sure Designer software, um, as well as answer any questions you may have about the um, uh, as the IMX room. So, Michael, if you're uh, ready to go, why don't you go oh, ahead yeah. and take control and uh, we'll get started. Uh, welcome everybody. As uh, Craig mentioned, my name is Michael Casey. I'm the technical specialist here at Mainline. And uh, today we're going to be talking about Sure Designer 4.1. Designer is a product that's been around for a while, but this uh, 4.1 version that was just released is pretty significant and it comes along with the release of our IntelliMix room product. I know most, if not all of you, have seen some presentations on IntelliMix Room. Uh, if you haven't, definitely get with your uh, mainline rep and uh, get up to speed on that product. It's a really great new offering. So at this point, I'm going to share my screen. And first thing we'll talk about is how do we get Designer? So um, any old internet browser of your choice, you can log on to software.sure.com. And uh, here we can see there's a login page. And down at the bottom says register for designer. You just click on that link and it's a free download. Uh, just put in a little bit of information, your email, and it'll send you an email um, telling you how to download and install it on your Windows machine. So I'm going to go ahead and open this. And right now, if you have an old version, it's important that you um, have version 4.1. That's the latest right now. Um, and that has support for the MXA 910, MXA 310, and P300 firmware versions 4.1, which were released recently, as well as our new IntelliMix Room product, which is on version 1.0 because it's brand new. So before we get started, a couple other little Sure apps we have here. I have uh, Sure Web Device Discovery. This is a handy little app um, for finding Sure devices on your network. You can see that I have three hardware devices on my network. I have a P300, MXA910, and a 310. And uh, it'll tell you, yes, it's on the, it has a web UI that you can launch by the IP address in a browser. And yes, it's on the same subnet as your computer. This is really important because if you can't find a device because it's on a different subnet, the uh, MDS protocol will actually populate it here. And it'll tell you, no, it's on the same subnet. So at that point, you can change your computer's IP to be able to reach it and fix any uh, IP issues you may be having. So that's a handy little device, Sure Web, dis web Device Discovery. That's available at Sure.com for free free download. And another one we have here is the Sure Update Utility. This is an important one if you have Sure products. Keep your firmware up to date. You can see uh, in this main screen, Update Devices. I have three devices that populated, which are on my local network here. I have the 310, the 910, and a P300. And we have green lights because all three are up to date. If they were not up to date, we'd be yellow. And we could click over here and see which version we have to install. And this uh, update utility covers a whole range of uh, pretty much anything that's networked from Sure. 
we have here the Axiom Digital wireless microphones, you know, the QLXD, ULXD wireless microphones, um, all of the conferencing products, the 310s, the 910s, MXW, MXCW, PSM 1000s. Pretty much if it's networked and it's a Sure product, you can update the firmware via this Sure update, update utility. All right, so now I'm going to get into Designer. Uh, now this is version 4.1. Uh, I did mention it has compatibility for the MXA 910 ceiling array microphone, as well as the MXA 310 tabletop array microphone, the uh, P300 hardware appliance conferencing processor, and uh, also Intellimix Room, which is our new software-based uh, Intellimix processing. And a um, few things that it does not support yet. They're the ANI 4 interfaces, the ANI 22 interfaces, MXW, and the uh, SCM820. Those are all network Dante devices that you can definitely connect to these other conferencing devices, but uh, the configuration is not yet supported in Designer. So one thing new in uh, version 4.1 of our hardware, if you're familiar with uh, our devices, let me launch, I'm gonna copy the IP address here of my 310 and paste it and go look at the hardware interface. You'll see a little pop-up that pop-ups now with uh, version 4.1, it says initialize this device. This is new in 4.1. It says continue without password. Uh, if you're gonna use designer to configure everything, this is the best option or set up password. What we're actually gonna do is we're gonna leave this alone. And if you're already using designer, just leave this alone. You don't even, allow, don't even need to log into the browser at all. So I'm gonna close this out and we will do our configuration in uh, Sure Designer. So over here on the left side of the window, we can see this is where most of our uh, options are gonna be that we're gonna be using. We have My Projects, which is uh, all of our projects are gonna be, every, every design we do is gonna be project-based and location-based. So we have projects here and each project has a location, which, which we'll see in a minute. Uh, templates, if you're doing a lot of rooms that are pretty much identical, you can save a template and then just launch it to a new location every time. You can save those in My Templates. We have online devices down here at the bottom left. We see I have four devices online. If I pop this window open, we can see a little more information about our devices. Now, uh, that configuration page I showed you with the new pop-up in uh, version 4.1 says uh, initialize devices. We get a similar notification here in uh, Sure Designer. We've detected new devices on your network, initialize devices to configure. So before it gets used, if it's fresh out of the box, we need to initialize the device which basically tells us either we're going to configure it in the designer or that we have received the option to install a password on the browser. You don't have to install a password, but this prompt will give you the option. So right now we're going to initialize all these devices. And that'll just let us show up when we start designing. And then we have an event log. This is something you probably just use if you're uh, working with sure support, trying to do some troubleshooting and a uh, few settings in here, the most important of which would be uh, your network setup. In here, you can see that I have only one network interface card. Uh, if you have multiple cards, you can choose which one you're using to contact your Sure devices. So I'm going to go back here to my projects, which is where we start off with a design. And up here at the top left, we see a little button that says new. I'm going to click on that and I can either import a project from a uh, from my hard drive and I will say, if you're upgrading from Designer, you know, three or earlier version, this is a good idea to export your projects and just save them on your hard drive so that you can import them later um, in your new Designer. But I'm going to say new project. I'm going to call this training project. The name is required. Description is optional. I'm going to leave description blank. And you can see once I click that, we have now opened up our training project. So this interface we see now is our training project that we just created. And up at the top, we see three tabs, location, devices, and licenses. And start out in location because every design needs at least one location. I'm gonna click new. Um, if you have multiple locations, if you're dealing with a really large campus, you can organize your locations by folder. Uh, I don't have a very large location right now, so I'm just gonna click location. And we're going to call this first location huddle room. And leave the description blank. And once I create that, it pops up a window, which is my huddle room location. 
Now at the top, I see overview, coverage map, signal flow. Start out in overview by default. And I see live mode, which we'll get to later and create template, which we can do if we're doing multiples of the uh, identical rooms. And here we have uh, virtual devices. These are devices, even if I didn't have anything online yet, I can drag these into my project and start configuring them. So I have the Annie USB interface, Intellimix room software, the MXA 310 tabletop microphone, the 910 ceiling microphone, and the P300 audio conferencing processor. Uh, in this huddle room, I'm just going to take the IMX room. We'll say that this is a uh, dedicated PC type of room. And um, it says choose license type. And the IMX room, if you haven't seen the presentation, comes in a couple different SKUs, uh, eight channel variety and a 16 channel variety. I know that my licenses are 16 channels, so I'm just going to click next. And now we have a 16 channel IMX room in our location. And I also need a microphone, so I'm going to click on the 310 drag it over to our workspace and now we have an mxa310 also populated this is enough to get started with uh conferencing for audio so next step i'm going to click over here on the top a uh, coverage map and this is specific to our microphones our mxa910 microphones which uh we'll actually get to a little bit later so i'm going to go over to uh single flow and here we see the two devices that i've populated in the um Huddle room. We have the MXA 310 microphone and the IMX room software. I'm going to separate these a little bit. You can click these and drag these around wherever you need. And uh, we'll see all these uh, pins. These are output pins for my MXA 310 for my lobes and my auto mix output. And then the IMX room has one through, it's a 16 channel variety. So we have 16 channels of AEC and Telemix processing plus an additional eight channels of auxiliary Dante inputs. And then we have eight Dante outputs. Now, what I could do is click these pins, drag them to another pin, and we can see that the patching takes place there. But there's a uh, quicker way to do this. So I'm going to delete these. And I'm going to click up here in the top left, this button that says auto route. So it says uh, select one microphone and one processor to route all available audio channels. And we see a microphone is not selected, processor not selected. Let's go ahead and select our MXA310. Just click on it once. And we see microphone MXA310. Click on our Intellimix room and Intellimix room. So now we've populated a microphone and a processor. And I'm going to click route. And it automatically routed one to one default routing. And the next thing we're going to do, if you're using Sure Devices, there's this really cool feature in Designer called Optimize Audio. I'm going to click this. It's going to look at how my audio has been routed and it's going to automatically optimize my gain, my EQ, all of the settings within each of these devices to be a good baseline to start with. And uh, if you click on this link, you can see a view a list of what's changing. And I'm going to go ahead and open that up to show you. There's a lot of stuff. If you were going to do this manually, it, it would take you some time. So it's really, really nice feature that we can optimize the audio. All at once. So right now, Optimize audio successful. We got a really good baseline uh, gain structure and EQ to start with. Now, with each of these devices, I can either double click on them or I can click and then hit configure and it'll give me more options specific to that device. So I have the 310 selected now. I'm going to click configure. And just to show you, it defaults to a one toroid channel. And um, we'll say that I want uh, four cardioid channels around the uh, microphone. So what I'm going to do is uh, channel one. I'm going to change over here on the right panel. I have polar pattern. I'm going to change that to cardioid. And now what I'm going to do over here in the top left, since the default is just one channel, I'm going to say add channel. And this is where I can add my additional lobes. So I see channel three, channel four, and they've defaulted to cardioid. This is what I want. We can click these and drag them around as needed to uh, change our directionality. And um, we can also do the angle to do the same thing in increments of five degrees. And so now I have everything I want on my MXA 310. Now on the channels pages, um, if we weren't using a Telemix room, this would be where we do our auto mixing and everything. And we could set our gains for each of the lobes if we need uh, if one gain 
one lobe needs a little bit boost and gain, we can set it here. And um, we have our auto mixer as well. And this we would be using if we did not have IntelliMix auto, auto mixer. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out and double click on my IMX room. And if you haven't seen this yet, but you're familiar with the P300, it should look very, very familiar. We have our microphone inputs, 1 through 16. These all go through AEC processing. Our signal froze left to right here. We have AC, noise reduction, auto gain control. And then we have our auto mixer for our microphones. And then we have our additional eight auxiliary Dante inputs that bypass the auto mixing and go straight to the matrix mixer. And then we have eight Dante outputs. Now, a couple things we want to show you here. We have virtual audio output since this is a software based processor. My virtual out audio output is uh, basically what goes back to my codec. So this is the audio that gets sent back to Teams or sent back to Skype, you know, that goes out to the far end. And down here I have virtual audio input, which is what's coming in from my codec and from my software. Now we also have PC output here. This is your uh, hardware output on your PC. So if you install this on a Nook PC and you want to use the HDMI audio out, this is where you would route it. Or if you want to use the headphone output, whatever uh, sound card you have selected in your PC. And same thing with the input over here on the left, PC input. This is your hardware inputs on your PC. So that's the schematic page for IntelliMix Room. We have uh, inputs page where we have all of our individual controls for each input, the AEC noise reduction gain control, mutes, we can link mutes, um, logic enable, and we have an auto mixer. Here's where we can set up at the top. We have manual gain sharing and gating mode and defaults to gating. And this is where we can adjust our auto mix settings for our 16 microphones. And then we have the matrix mixer where we can combine those 16 auto mix outputs as well as our other inputs with the uh, PC input, the virtual input, and the eight auxiliary Dante inputs and route them to all of our outputs. And then here we have master control of all of our outputs. Let me go ahead and close that out. And close out the huddle room. And now we're back to projects. I'm in my training project and I see I have one location, which is huddle room. I'm going to click new. I'm going to add one more location. We'll call this conference room. And here in the conference room, we see we've opened up to the overview where we drag our devices into the workspace. I have a uh, P300 in my conference room. And I have an MXA 910 in my conference room. And that's all of my devices. So now when I go to coverage map, this is a really handy feature for the MXA 910s. Um, we see a grid, which basically represents a floor plan of our uh, conference room. It defaults to a two by two grid, which is a typical ceiling grid. And we can see our uh, MXA 910 has been dropped in. We can click it and drag it around. And it has defaulted to eight lobes with a default coverage pattern. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to click off of that. And up here in the top left, I have add image. I'm going to click that. And here's where we can import a CAD image of our conference room. So I'm going to click here. And we can see that we have a, uh, our table layout with our chairs. And this little pop-up that says draw a line to set image to scale. So we're going to say that I know this doorway is three feet. So I'm going to draw that. And then down here at the bottom, it says enter reference size. I'm going to say that was three feet. And you can enter decimals here if you need, you know, if your measurements are in inches, uh, if you need to do a little math. So three feet, hit the check mark. And now this has scaled my image to three feet. And we can see that it's quite large now. If I wanted to, I could click off of this image and I can drag up here at the top right. I'm using my scroll wheel on my mouse. It's really handy to have a uh, separate mouse when you're using this with a scroll wheel. I'm using my scroll wheel to zoom in and out. 
if you click up here at the top right, this is our basically our workspace dimensions, and it defaults to 30 by 30 and nine foot tall. Uh, this nine foot height is going to be important when we set the height of our MXA 910 microphone because we can't go past that height. So I'm going to drag this out just so I can fit my image in. And if I click anywhere on the workspace and hold and drag, that I can pan around the workspace. So right here I clicked, uh, I didn't show you that. I'll click up here in the top left where it says edit image. And now I can drag my image back into the workspace. And click off of that. Now I'm going to click my MXA 910 and I'm going to put it over the conference table. And you can see if you have a tile ceiling, uh, this workflow defaults to uh, snapping to grid. So wherever I put it, it snaps into this two by two grid. So if you know um, where your ceiling tiles line up in your room, that can be really helpful. Uh, if you'd like to turn that feature off up here in the top left, there's this eye with a little slash through it. And I can click snap to grid. At this point, I can drag it anywhere. So if I don't know where my ceiling tiles line up, or if I'm using a, a hard ceiling, a drywall ceiling, or open ceiling, I can put my microphone wherever it is best for coverage. And this looks like quite a lot of lobes for this size room, so I'm going to go ahead and delete some. I'm going to click on channel 8, and we can see it isolates to channel 8. I'm just going to hit delete on my keyboard. I always like to go from uh, top channel down, because then in our uh, channels list, it... Uh, It'll be, you know, one, two, three, four, not one, two, four, seven, you know, which is a little just OCD. I'm going to go down to five lobes and drag these around. Drag these around the table. And looks like we got a good starting spot right there. And um, when we click on a lobe over here on the right, we have more properties for the lobe. We can see they default to wide. We can change the uh, change it to narrow or medium. And we can change the gain of that particular lobe. And we could set the X and Y coordinates of where that lobe is pointed and the uh, talker height. The talker height's an important one. If you have people that are standing, you know, it'll be a little higher. Uh, typically three and a half to four feet is what you'd use for uh, people sitting. So right now we have four feet, that looks good. And I'm gonna go over here to single flow now. And this looks just like the other room, the huddle room. So I have my MXA 910 here. I'm gonna drag my P300 over here. And I'm going to do a little auto route. And we see the P300 is already selected. I'm going to select the 910 route right there. And uh, the cool thing about this is there's these gray check marks. Um, later, when we synchronize these, uh, it will actually uh, subscribe all the Dante routes. And uh, it, will, it will give us the option to subscribe to Dante routes, and then these will all turn green. So that's a really handy feature that if you're using sure device to sure device, you don't necessarily need to open up Dante controller and do your Dante routes one by one. And I'm going to do a little optimize audio to give us a good baseline. And there we go. Let me close that out. We have location. We have our two locations. We've uh, assigned all our routes, optimize our audio. And here I have uh, devices. Go back to online devices. Everybody's there. And my thing is all right. Oops, should have something too soon. So back here in devices. All right, all right. So I'm going to go to location here and then double check, double click my conference room. And up at the top, we see a live mode. And I'm going to go ahead and click that. So now that everything, all of our online devices have populated over here in the left. So this is location based in our conference room. Click on live mode. Now we have everything in here on the left. And we have an MXA 910 and a P300 in our conference room. So I only have one of each online, so it's pretty apparent which ones I'm going to use. I'm going to click and drag right over the MXA 910, drop it there. Now it's associated. And you can see over here on the right, it says not synced. 
we haven't synchronized yet, so we haven't changed any settings. We haven't changed any routing or any lobes, anything yet on the MXA 910. When we sync, that's when that'll happen. So I also need a P300. So I'm going to click the P300, drag it into my workspace, hover over P300. And now we have both devices associated. I'm going to close out of conference room. Actually, I should have synced those first. So here in our conference room, once we've dragged these over and associated them with our virtual devices, we have this button in the top right that says synchronize. And it gives us two options, push to devices or pull to design. Uh, push to devices is going to take everything we just did with our routing and everything offline, and it's going to send that to our hardware devices. Pull to design is going to take all of the settings that are already on the hardware device and change the settings of our, our design. So what I want to do is push to devices because these are brand new out of the box. Um, if you're using, if you're reusing devices, a good idea is to set a uh, location. So right now we're in conference room, which is an actual location. If you do a location here, that's just, you know, a uh, backup location, we call it backup. Put all your devices in it, say pull to design. You can save that. That way everything that was configured in devices is saved and backed up before you deploy it to an actual room. So I'm going to say push to devices. A little pop-up comes up, says this will completely overwrite the devices. And um, only this design will be pushed to your devices. There's a little check mark down here. It says push Dante routes. So we have an option. Do we want to actually subscribe to Dante subscriptions at this point, or do we want to leave it as is? You know, if we're using any third-party devices, maybe we want to leave it as is and use uh, Dante controller. But we're using brand new Sure device to Sure device. So yes, we absolutely do want to push the uh, Dante routes. So I'm going to say push, and it's going to give me a little status indication. And we're successful. If it ever pops up and says unsuccessful, just push again. Usually the second time will do it. So that's done. Our conference room is synced. And we see this pop up says you should save this, save this design as a preset before making any further changes. Um, because we're in live mode, any changes we make now to the devices won't be part of our saved design offline. So we're going to go to our huddle room and basically do the same thing. We have IMX room and an MXA 310. I'm going to drag IMX room. Oh, skipped a step. I got to go to live mode up here in the top left. And I'm going to drag the IMX room device and hover over IMX room. And we can see that it's populated, but we have this banner up at the top, unlicensed Intellimix room installations detected in this project. This is specific to uh, Intellimix room because each one needs to be licensed and the license are project based. So if I, I'm going to go ahead and associate my 310. And let's go ahead and synchronize these. Push to devices. Yes, I'll push the Dante routes. And uh, even though there's no license, we can still push all the configuration to IMX room. Successful and successful. So now at this point, if we go to licenses up here in the top right, it will take us to our license page. And the first time it pops up each license of Intellimix room needs a license pass audio. To activate your license, use your license ID. This is something when you purchase an Intellimix room license, you will get via email. And it says during activation, license activates all purchase installations. So anything you have in here, it's going to look for a license against that license ID. And if it's available and exists, it's going to go ahead and activate these devices in this list. So at this point, if I click here, and I click activate. And here's where I'd put in a uh, license device or a device license. I'm just going to go to my desktop here and I've saved my license ID in a handy little text document. Uh, this is something you'll get via email when you order a copy of Intellimix Room. And I'm going to go back to designer, paste that into the license ID field. Check that I've read the agreement and I'm going to click activate. And here in the background, you should see this little red, red exclamation go away. 
as soon as it contacts the activation server. And there it went. And we can see that our license expiration is now February 2023. And I'm going to double click here. It's going to open up my IMX room configuration window. And we should see some audio coming in right there. Channels one through four. That's our uh, MXA 310 microphone, which is a few feet away from me on the desk. And uh, we can see Dante output and virtual audio output. Um, so before we did our license, you would have seen some uh, red exclamation points here on the output. We've seen audio coming in, but these uh, there would have been red exclamations telling you that the uh, IMX room is not licensed, so the uh, it's not outputting any audio. But now we see that we're clear and uh, we've got audio output. And I'm going to switch over to my Huddle Room PC, which is also connected to this Teams meeting. And you'll have to pardon the, pardon the Infinity Vision. But you can see over here on the right hand panel of my Teams application that I have my uh, speaker and microphone selection from my uh, PC sound cards. And I've already defaulted to Intellimix Room on speaker and microphone. And we can see that my microphone is currently muted in the team at Teams application. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to mute my mic on, the, uh, on my presentation computer and switch over. And at this point, you should hear me on the uh, MXA 310 uh, via the Huddle Room PC that we just configured with Intellimix Room. And now we're ready for conferencing. Uh, how's the Q&A looking, Craig? We got any questions coming in? We did get one. Um, someone had asked if uh, this was PC only. Uh, at this time, it is only uh, PC uh, software. Um, it does work in parallels. If you're working with a Mac and you have parallels, it will work with uh, with parallels. Um, but currently, as a downloadable uh, file, it is only a PC executable file. If there are any other questions, um, you know, we can address those at this time. Just type them into the chat. Uh, in the meantime, while talking, I did get a question. Are there any additional steps that need to be taken to utilize AES 67? Um, in that case, you would want to use uh, Dante controller and uh, configure your devices there in uh, the device tab. Let's see if I can open that. So here in uh, Dante controller, we see all of my uh, online devices, my Intellimix Room 310, 910, P300. Uh, in device info, you would want to click on the P300 and open up AES config. We can see that it's disabled right now because we're using Dante. Uh, so yeah, utilize the Dante controller for that. Um, and that's a, that's a free download from uh, Audinate.com. Is this used to set up MX Wireless 2? Uh, the Microflex Wireless. Um, in that case, the designer would not be used to configure it. Use the web interface to configure it, and then you can do your patching in Dante Controller here in the routing tab. OK, uh, are there any packages available, meaning a deals on a complete system? I can grab that one. Uh, so we do have packages available for uh, bundling the MXA 910 and MXA 310 with a P300. Uh, at the moment, there isn't a bundle price to do it with IMX Room. Um, I will certainly uh, address that with Sure and, and see if we can get an answer from them as to if that's something that they'll do in the future. So thanks again for joining us. Uh, thank you, Michael, uh, Casey, for the presentation. 
Um, Michael is available to answer any questions that you may have as well. Um, if you have uh, further um, technical questions you'd like to ask, he's always available at mcasey, C-A-S-E-Y, at mainlinemarketing.com. And you can see it there on the screen. Perfect. Thanks again Thanks for joining us. We appreciate Thanks it. Thanks, everyone. That's it for this episode. I hope you learned something new. If you have any questions, as always, please feel free to reach out. You can find us at mainlinemarketing.com.